फ्रेंड्स गुड इवनिंग दिस इज श्यामल हियर आई एम गोइंग टू रीड आउट द फेमस स्पीच एट वर्ल्ड पार्लियामेंट ऑफ रिलीजियस चिकागो इलेवेंथ सेप्टेम्बर एटीन हंड्रेड नाइन्टी थ्री स्पीच इज गिवेन बाय नानंदन स्वामी विवेकानंद सिस्टर एंड ब्रदर्स ऑफ अमेरिका इट फील्स माय हार्ट विथ अनस्पीकेबल टू राइज इन रेस्पॉन्स to the warm and cordial welcome which you have given us i thank you in the name of the most ancient order of monks in the world i thank you in the name of the mother of all religions and i thank you in the name of the millions and millions of hindu people of all the classes and sets my thanks also to sham speaker on this platform who referring to the delegates from the orient have told you that these men from far off nations may well claim the honor of bearing to different lands the idea of toleration i am proud to belong to a religion which has taught the world both tolerance and universal acceptance we believe not only in universal toleration but we accept all religions as true i am proud to belong to a nation which has sheltered the prosecuted and the refugees of all religions and all nations of the earth i am proud to tell you that we have gathered in our bosom the purest remnant of israelites who came to southern india and took refuge with us in the very year in which their holy temple was shattered to pieces by roman tyranny i am proud to belong to the religion which has shattered and is still fostering the remnant of the ground jurisdiction nation i will quote to you written a few lines from a hymn which i remember to have repeated from my earliest boyhood which is every day repeated by millions of human beings as the different streams having their sources in different places all mingle their water in the sea so o oh lord the different paths which men take through different tendencies various though they appear crooked or straight all lead to thee the present conversation which is one of the most august assemblies ever held is in itself a vindication a declaration to the world of the wonderful doctrine preached in the gita moreover come to me through whatsoever form i reach him all men are struggling through paths which in the end lead to me secretarialism bigotry and its horrible descendant 
fanatism have long processed this beautiful earth they have filled the earth with violence drenched it often and often with human blood destroyed civilization and sent whole nations to despair had it not been for these horrible demons human society would be far more advanced than it is now but their time is come and i fervently hope that the bell told this morning in honor of this convention maybe the death knell of all fanatism of all prosecution with the sword or with the pain and of all uncharitable feeling between person wending their way to the same goal again on 15th september 1893 he is talking about in his disagreement of certain issues what he is telling i'll tell you a little story you have heard the eloquent speaker who has just finished say let us cease from abusing each other and he was very sorry that there should be always so much variance but i think i should tell you a story which would illustrate the cause of this violence a frog lived in a well it had lived there for a long time it was born there and brought up there and yet was a little small frog of course the evil lucinist was not there then to tell us whether the frog lost its eyes or not but for our story sake we must take it for granted that it had its eyes and that is every day cleansed the water of all worms and vasily that lived in it with an eight energy that would do credit to our modern bacteriologist in this way it went on and become a little sleek and fat well one day another frog that lived in the sea came and fell into the well where are you from i am from the sea the sea how big that it is as big as my well he took a leaf from one side of the well to the others my friend said the frog of the sea how do you compare the sea with your little well then the frog took another leaf and asked is your sea so big what nonsense you speak to compare the sea with your well well then said the frog to the well 
nothing can be bigger than my will there can be nothing bigger than this this fellow is a liar so turn him out that has been the difficult difficulty all the while i am a hindu i am sitting in my own little well and thinking that the whole world is my little well the christian sits in his little well and thinks the whole world is his well the mahmadian sits in his little well and thinks that is the whole world i have to thank you of america for the great attempt you are making to break down the barriers of this little world of ours and hope that in the future the lord will help you to accomplish your purpose is giving one paper on 19 19 september 1893 on hinduism what he is talking three religions have stand in the world which have come down to us from time prehistoric hinduism zoroastrianism and judaism they have all received tremendous shocks and all of them prove by their survival their internal strength but while judaism failed to absorb christianity and was driven out in its place of birth by all conquering daughter and a handful of parsis is of all that remains to tell the tale of their grand religion sex after their sex arose in india and seemed to seek the religion of all religion of the vedas to its very foundation but like the water of the sea sore is tremendous earthquake is receded only for a while only to return in an all absorbing flood a thousand times more vigorous and when the tumult of the rust was over the sects were all sucked in and absorbed and assimilated into immense body of the mother faith from the high spiritual flights of all vedanta philosophy of which the latest discoveries of science seems like echoes to the low idea of idolatry with multifarious mythology the agnosticism of buddhist and the atheism of the jains each and all have a place 
in the Hindu religion. Where then the question arises, where is the common center to which all these widely diverging ruddy cover is where is the common basis upon which all those these seemingly hopeless contradiction rest and this is the question i shall attempt to answer the hindu have received their religion through Revelation, the Vedas, they hold that Vedas are without beginning and without end. It may sound ludicrous and to this audience, how a book can be without beginning or end but by the Vedas not the books are meant, they mean the accumulated treasury of spiritual laws discovered by different persons in different times. Just at the law of gravitation existed before its discovery and would exist if all humanity forget forgot it so it is with the laws that govern the spiritual world the moral ethical and spiritual relation between soul and soul and between the individual spirit and the father of all spirit were there before their discovery and would remain even if we forget them. The discoveries of these laws are called Rishis. The we honor them as perfected beings. I am glad to tell this audience that some of the very greatest of them were women. Here is here it may be said that these laws of laws may be without end, but they must have had a beginning. The Vedas teach us the creation is without beginning or end science is said to have proved that sum of total of cosmic energy is always is the same then if there is there was a time when nothing existed where was all this manifested energy some way it was a potential form in god in that case god is sometimes potential and sometimes kinetic which would make him mutable everything mutable is a compound and everything compound must undergo that change which is called destruction so god would die which is absurd therefore there is never was a time when there was no creation if I may be allowed to use a simile creation and creator are two lines without beginning and without end. 
running parallel to each other god is the ever active providence by whose power system after systems are being evolved out of chaos made of made to run for a time and again destroyed this is what the brahmin boy repeats every day the sun and the moon the lord created like the suns and the moons of the previous cycles and this agrees with modern science here i stand if i shut my eyes and try to conceive my existence i i i what is the idea before me the idea is a body i am i then nothing but a combination of material substances the vedas declared no i am a spirit living in a body i am not the body the body will die but i shall not die here i am this body it will fall but i shall go on living had also a past the soul was not created the cessation means a combination which means a certain future dissolution if then the soul was created it must die shamar born happy enjoy perfect health with beautiful body mental vigor but all wants supplied others are born miserable some are without hands or feet others again are idiots and only drag on a watched existence why if they are all created why does a just and merciful god create one happy and another unhappy why he is so partial nor would it main matters in the list to hold that these who are miserable in this life will be happy in a future one why should a man be miserable even here in the reason of just and a merciful god in the second place the idea of creator god doesn't explain the anomaly and simply expresses the cruel fiat of all powerful being there must have been causes then before his birth to make a man miserable or happy and those were his past action and not all tendencies of mind and the body accounted for by inherited aptitude here are two parallel lines of existence one of the mind and other of the matter if matter and its transformations answer for all that we have there is no 
necessity for supposing the existence of a soul but it cannot be proved that thought has been evolved out of matter and if a philosophical monism is inviable spiritual monism is certainly logical and no less desirable than a materialistic monism but neither of this is necessary here we cannot deny that the bodies acquire certain tendencies from heredity but these tendencies only mean that physical configuration through which a peculiar mind alone can act in a peculiar way friends his paper on hinduism is very too long paper uh, i want to go back to his another uh, speech the religion not the crying need of india that is on 20th september 1893 where he is talking about christian must always be ready for a good criticism and i hardly think that you will mind if i make a little criticism you christians you are so fond of spending out missionaries to save the soul of hidden why do you not try to save their bodies from starvation in india during the terrible famines thousands died from hunger yet you christians did nothing you erect churches all through india but the crying evil in the east is not religion that have religion enough but it is breed that the suffering millions of burning indians india cry out for which fresh throats they ask us for bread but we give them stones it is an insult to a starving people to offer them religion it is an insult to a starving man to teach him metaphysics in india a priest that priest for money would lose caste and be spat upon by the people i came here to seek aid for my improvised people and fully realized how difficult it show was get help for 